Hi, um, I'm, I'm James. Um, thank, thank you very much for joining us uh, uh, today. Um, and we're going to be looking at, uh, well, the subject is Wise Up. It's going to be a look at contemporary approaches to designing online learning content. Um, please feel free to chat all the way through, and we'll pick up your comments, etc., as we go along, and um, hopefully uh, be able to reply to any questions and that sort of thing. But please feel free to comment as we go, and, we'll, and we're eminently interruptible. <clears throat> so, um, I'm just going to go to the first slide, except I'm, I'm having a bit of trouble with the slides. Can you just bear with me a second? There we go. Um, proving conclusively that content really is king um, through the, the, the technological blizzard there. Um, so we're going to basically look at you know, the focus today is very much on content and and how we sort of design learning content in the light of uh, for a contemporary audi audience using uh, basically modern development tools. And we're going to try and look as, at, at as many examples as possible um, to keep things lively. And um, but you might have to bear with us a little bit because there's a little bit of lag as those programs um, come through. <clears throat> so. And so we're looking at content development. Um, the just a quick sort of uh, to get that in context. Um, in terms of content, I mean, over the last few years, there's definitely been a shift uh, to a resources, not courses approach. It's definitely an ongoing thing. Um, the the term resources, not courses, in terms of content, has kind of changed a bit. We hear a lot about micro learning, um, for example. Although micro learning isn't actually, strictly speaking, um, resources, not courses. Nonetheless, uh, mic the term microlearning illustrates a sort of a mindset that is going towards much more you know, smaller, much more bite-sized um, pieces of learning. Um, and so it's indicative of kind of resources uh, approach, as are other uh, en vogue terms like toolkits has come back again. You know, so the content sits within a toolkit or content sits within portals, which again suggests being able to sort of having a resource-based uh, sort of approach. Um, whichever way you look at it, um, resources tend to be um, often, in terms of content, produced in some kind of development tool. Um, at Kineo, we, we use a sort of tool agnostic. Um, we do a lot of stuff in a storyline. But most of all, most of the content we produce these days is in Adapt. Um, and Adapt really is a great success story. We've been in Venice for five years now. Uh, Adapt is an open is open source, and it's a responsive framework. And um, let's say we probably do I don't know 80% of the of the content we produce is in Adapt. So we're going to sort of focus very much on Adapt content for now because it is a kind of contemporary uh, development framework. Um, and tends not to follow such a linear, uh, in, in terms of content development, I suppose, um, in the old days, if you like, a lot of content was a very linear approach and storyline still tends, content still tends to fit that bill. Whereas when it's done in Adapt, it's much more um, web style. So, um, as I said, Adapt is a great success story. Let's look at a couple of examples of programs that have been produced in, in Adapt. Kicking off with uh, Domino's, this is where I say you might have to just bear with me while there's a bit of a delay while we load up the course. So Domino's um, is, is a really good example of um, basically content that was produced, in fact, for to run primarily on the phone. Um, Adapt is responsive, therefore it runs on content, runs on all devices, but the this was produced primarily to run on phones, uh, and also it's designed very much for people sort of uh, who are going to deliver pizzas, 
um, many of whom um, English is a second language. Um, I'm going to put it in the sort of phone um, view. I'm going to go try and not too far. We don't have too much. So you can see it. So then we switch to a different topic. And video here. Um, we'll just try switching computers. Bear with us one minute. Wait. Which one did? I think actually the sounds just come back. Just so. I'm so sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> We'll leave it here. This seems to be a good spot. <laughs> okay, this, the sounds come back. Uh, here we are in, in the in the Domino's um, course, which is designed to say for for um, pizza delivery people. It's very sort of simple, very sort of, uh, short, bite-sized learning. Um, you scroll down. Works very well on the phone. It's like say a piece of video, piece of Here's some video of it. It's quite, it's quite multimedia. It's just got lots of um, little video and animations in it. Got little top tips um, and games and so on and so forth. So that's one example of uh, content in Adapt. So Adapt is uh, content very well suited to for mobile um, and. Another feature I think of Adapt is that it's very, very good for producing material that's very heavily branded. So here's a, a course from for what we did for Weller, some content we did for Weller. Here we got the top. So, and this is content designed for hairstylists. It's very, very on brand and it is learning. But as you can see, it's it's almost like treating the learner like a consumer. This is very like sort of being on the web, it's like product uh, information, and um, but it is actually learning. So in a way, it's like an example of the learner as consumer. And I think this is a theme that we sort of we're going to explore a bit bit more as we go forward. With this webinar. So, whatever the content, that, um, these are the sorts of considerations from a learning design point of view that we always make, whatever, for any given piece of content. You're always thinking about what are the objectives, the audience, what's the nature of the content, um, what sort of me media. Are we able to use? Do we have at our disposal? You know, um, what sort of te what's the technological constraints or, or uh, possibilities? And of course, a sense of, of what's affordable. But um, when you're looking at learning design in terms of a general sort of uh, a, a approach to learning uh, to designing and learning content, the audience are especially important. There's no point um, designing content which the audience doesn't relate to. And today's learner um, is quite a different beast from the, the learner possibly of the past. Um, so I'd invite people to sort of uh, uh, chat here and please type in any comments uh, 
or answers to the question, what do you think are the characteristics of the modern learner? And this is quite a useful um, slide in the sense of capturing some of the characteristics of the, the modern learner. Um, obviously, the untethered uh, uh, heading refers to the fact that people basically like consuming mobile. Uh, collaborative people are collaborative and uh, empowered, so they you know they're very social nowadays. Um, and they, the of course the the as the technology takes over, the people are very distracted and overwhelmed and impatient, which suggests that possibly the modern learner likes their content short, <coughs> sorry, <big one. coughs> uh, bite sized, you know, just in time, uh, at the point of need. And I guess also content increasingly has to stand out if it, uh, from the crowd of us if it's going to be sort of fighting for people's attention uh, in this way. So it's quite a good profile of, of uh, the, the modern learner. Um, in fact, um, the influence of technology is indisputable and um, they've even got a word for it now. Techno um, hoitagogy. I don't really know how you say it, but um, it Basically, this term sort of accepts the impact of technology on learning. I think it's quite a sort of useful list of uh, characteristics. <clears throat> but um, I sort of probably prefer to call it something a bit simpler and to suggest um, that a contemporary approach to designing learning content is wise. Uh, so this is the title of the webinar. By wise, I mean it's kind of web style. Um, interactive, self-directed, and erudite. <coughs> so, by web style, uh, I mean think. I mean there are, there are loads and loads of characteristics of uh, of the web um, as they relate to learning content. But um, here's some of them. Um, where, by you know by web style, what do we mean? We mean sort of you know, inf primarily information based, um, social. The key word here is probably again, you know, consumer, um, because um, the web is all about consumption. Even if it's um, reference material, even if it's learning, there's still this element of, you know, you don't call people who use um, YouTube, for example, learners. They still probably call them consumers. Um, so I think that basically, learning content has to be increasingly have a web style to it and all that that means, which we'll explore in more detail as we go on. Um, having said that, we are in the business of producing learning content here. So it isn't actually websites that we're producing. It's not um, information, it's still learning. So there's still that need for a degree of engagement um, in order to teach and test, to test and teach and so on, and to engage and immerse learners so that they will learn from the content. And we know in practice over the last like, 20, 25, 30 years that you know, by building in a kind of level of interactivity to content, this helps people to uh, engage and retain uh, the content that they um, consume. So we looked at this web-like. Um, and interactive. Let me look at a couple of examples now um, where basically which demonstrate the sort of how in a way that possibly the two ages of ADAPT. I'm going to look at a, a course we've done for the, the Scout Squad a, a while ago which uh, is in ADAPT and is highly interactive and compare that with um, some content we produced more recently for NH Hotels which is possibly um, indicative of a, of a sort of shift towards this more web-like style of doing things. You have to bear with me now, but in the meantime, Kelsey's going to see whether we've got any comments in the chat. Uh, yeah, there are a few comments, but it doesn't look like any questions. Okay. Um, some people had things saying they were, uh, Michael said he wants interaction. And um, I think this is like what maybe learners want. And we had Anne who also commented like interactivity and variety, videos, quick feedback. And then Anne also mentioned needs to be able to record their progress so they can dip in and out of it, which is definitely 
very important to be able to jump back in. I think Wella, for example, showed that where it paused um, and said, like, you can jump back into where you, you once were. Uh, yeah, with the book, bookmarking. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's very important. Okay, well, that's uh, useful feedback. And um, so here's basically a scout, of course, um, some content produced for the scouts. Um, a few years ago now, but it's in Adapt, it's uh, responsive. Um, but interestingly, it's still got a conventional look and feel to it in the sense that it's got a menu which is sort of visually themed and all the content is, uh, all the topics are all displayed on the menu. And if we, if we look at the um, average uh, duration of a topic, it's about nine minutes, ten minutes. Let's just have a look on, uh, see whether... That's actually that's a short one, three minutes, ten minutes. So topics are about sort of anything from five to ten minutes long. Um, you go in, launch the topic, and you are scrolling down because it is in Adapt, so it's sort of still pretty contemporary content. And as we go through, sort of see that basically it's got a familiar um, ring to it. Uh, the first thing we kick off with a multiple choice question, submit the answer get feedback, we move on, we read some material, we then explore a step-by-step -step set of graphics, we then have a, um, a another multiple choice question, it's based around pictures, it's very interactive, it's definitely keeping you on your toes, virtually every single um, item, every part of the content is getting you to uh, do something, Got a nice variety of uh, interaction. Interactions We've got some true forces here, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's a little video here as well, and so on, so on. It's got a fairly. It's very good. It's good. It, it's good, solid, interactive learning content. But it's it, it's kind of it's like it's sort of it, it's in a kind of web style. Um, sort of way of presenting things on the one hand, but it's got it's a bit like that the, the uh, traditional e-learning approach to e-learning in the sense of the, it being a kind of interactive narrative. Um, just going to have a look now at something that was produced more recently. And I think it shows quite an interesting trend in terms of content. So this we had a we had a question on scouts. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know what resource we used to create scouts? Adapt. We used Adapt. Okay. The scouts was produced in Adapt, and so is this course I'm showing you now for NH Hotels. This was also produced in Adapt. As I said, the Scout thing, uh, uh, content was produced two or three years ago, I think, and the um, this NH Hotels content is much more recent. I think it's produced within the last um, release within the last six months. Um, and I think there is a kind of there's, there's a difference. There's a definite shift. Um, the Scouts one, as I said, it is extremely good content. It has a slight traditional feel to it still. Um, we have another question as well. Um, somebody named Nick has commented that the web style really helps it look contemporary, and there's lots of interactivity built in. But are there any links to theory or evidence from evaluation that show that this style is more effective than a traditional linear approach? Um, so I guess I'm, that you might include yeah, next. yeah. <clears throat> No, there's a there's a there's a kind of absence of uh, evidence. Uh, um, sorry, the, uh, the, to the question: Is there any sort of scientific style uh, or research evidence? There's a kind of dearth of it, really. Um, yeah. Having said that, it's being done uh, as we sort of speak. There are Google there are re released something um, a few years ago, maybe like around the time we just had created Adapt, um, and I think right before we released it out as open source and got all the clip collaborators on board. I want to say they produced something on like the future of kind of mobile engagement, like people using it. Um, 
which I think a lot of people use to support. I haven't read it in a long time, so I can't remember if, how valuable that would be, but that might be a source you might be interested in looking into, Nick. And we're certainly doing it at Kenya. We just um, we've got a major project for the, uh, that started a, a couple of months ago. Um, two, actually, two projects to sort of t uh, check all this out. One's a kind of UX uh, exercise in, in, in UX and learners, well, LX as it's called, the learner experience. We're doing so. We're doing UX uh, um, research on the one hand, and we're also doing LX research on the other. In the sense, we're also exploring the whole kind of end-to-end -end, uh, experience, the, the learner journey from signing on to, the, to an LMS all the way through to completion. Um, because really, at the end of the day, we're going to have to do it for ourselves uh, in order to find out what works and what doesn't work. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, I think the, I don't know if you've been looking at this um, hotel's content, but uh, and interestingly again, look, if you look at the menu, um, we're talking about items that are two minutes, three minutes, five minutes tops. The, the duration of any chunk of learning has come right down. The scouts, it's like five to ten minutes. Here it's more three to five minutes. So it's coming down all the time. And when you go into it, it's very, very straightforward. You come in, it's just like, basically like a website, you come in as a piece of... Uh, sound when we go to video. Okay. That's, that was what I was theorizing earlier, and I'm not sure how we can get around that. Um, I was trying to come up with an idea in my head, and I got nothing. <laughs> so um, possibly if we... I'll think about it, <laughs> and I'll get back to you. Okay. We think we're losing sound when we go when we run the video. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll crack on. Um, so I, I think that that sort of that that NH hotels content is 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 subtly different from the scouts content. It's it it is more web like than the scouts material, um, and arguably probably you know to be honest less interactive um, and more like in, more information orientated but uh, kind of quicker uh, in some respects and maybe that's what people sort of need and want more and more um, that's still kind of that's up for debate um, so to go back to wise um, we've had web web like we've had uh, we've, we've seen that actually even though it's web style because it's learning content, it still has to be um, interactive for that to work. We also suggest as part of why is that uh, modern content needs to be self-directed. Uh, we've touched on this before. We talked about toolkits, you know, resource-based approach, uh, portals, learning as kind of performance support, um, and that's important. And I think that also, um, finally, we come to erudite. Content increasingly needs to be designed so that it's erudite. What, what do I mean by that? I mean that it sort of spins out of, 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 of the web in the sense that content is much more literal. It's much more literal, I think, than it used to be uh, in the past. Um, less emphasis on dressing things up, whether that's dressing them up through sort of novelty themes or dressing things up just to the extent of putting content through a kind of learning filter, if you like. A sort of rendering it into learning. Um, possibly there's less need for that than in the past and a much more information and resource orientated approach is, uh, is appropriate for content. So by erudite, I mean also if you if we get the UX right uh, so that the user experience is good, possibly we borrow from uh, websites, we borrow from uh, apps and make we, we, we borrow from from that the, that kind of UX, and uh, so it's all about ease of use. Then we should be able to just put content in that's incredibly sort of straightforward in, into those sorts of frameworks. I don't think we're there yet. I think currently we're still sort of producing e-learning, but I, I'd like to think that perhaps we're going to kind of move away from that, and we'll, we'll provide um, learning content, I suppose, which is somewhat different, really. Because he only brings with it quite a lot of sort of um, linear 
baggage. Okay, um, so we looked at um, introduced the WISE. Um, WISE kind of sits within, I think, best practice content to design. Uh, um, in this diagram here, I've also included UX because UX, I think, is a very important ingredient. As in fact, people have been saying in the chat, and as I've said, in terms of you know, we're committing quite a lot of um, effort to R&D in this area this year. Um, and UX could be LX. Um, let's see how some of what we've been talking about uh, comes together um, when it's sort of in conjunction with a couple of Kineo innovations um, that really sort of brings the, uh, the content alive. And by which I mean a menu um, which we particularly think is very, very good and it fits this kind of consumer. Um, uh, the bill of being consumerish and uh, and easy to use for the user, and secondly, um, m much more use of uh, multimedia in the content than perhaps has been the case in the past. So we'll kind of work with why is in your in the back of your mind. Let's just look work through, look at this particular menu and video and interactive video examples. So in terms of the, of the web um, web style. A really popular and successful kind of menu structure is the Netflix uh, uh, type menu, where you can basically browse. It's sort of it's all about browsing and and picking what you like. You kind of it's about swiping, as a rule. Uh, it works very well, generally across all devices, particularly uh, nifty on 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 a phone or a tablet because of that sort of swipishness um, and. We've talked, you know, about the learner as a consumer. Um, <clears throat> this is very much a consumer site. So can we tap into that kind of consumer design and apply it to learning material? Um, so what we could do is we could sort of steal from, from say, the Netflix style approach. And how does that translate into um, structuring learning content? We could argue. If we take, just stay at the menu level, we can put topics, break topics down into lots of small pages, which might look familiar, of course, because it's, uh, it's quite linear. Um, but the, the difference is that actually these items, these pages, could be very self-contained as well, um, because you can, you know, unlike a linear course of old, where you wouldn't just be able to select a page with uh, this approach, you can make each page self-contained and very selectable in its own right. We'll see how what we mean by that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to have a quick look at an example of this menu translated and it translates to a learning context, a Netflix style menu. I'm while you get that set up, I'm thinking I might change the mic onto my computer, mm -hmm. and then that way when we play sound later on, no, yeah, we should okay. be able to play from your computer and not have the issue. But for the next one, just mm -hmm. while you get it set up. So hold on one moment, everybody. I need to show you. Hold on. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Okay, let's turn to the camera. Okay. <laughs> Hello again. I hope that we still have that sound. Um, okay, it is. I was talking about the whole um, for a that electric Borrow that approach and bring it across into uh, learning design. Uh, here's a, an example of a Netflix style menu. That we've developed that is in adapt, um, and you can see that you can I put it in the mobile view because um, 
basically I think it, it demonstrates it, it best. Um, obviously I'm not swiping, uh, but you can see here how we've got the topics um, as you scroll down, get started, who we are, the railway system, transforming the railway. So you can scroll down through the topics and then within any given topic we've got different, um, they are technically speaking pages but actually each page is very different from the other, they're kind of they're standalone. You can scroll across, um, there, aren't, there aren't actually that many, um, are you sure you'd like to leave this page? Yes I would. Go back again. I can scroll across who, who we are and I can select as I see fit. Um, I can also, hang on, let's go in and show it. So here's a, so I go into this page here. It's very short, it's very small, it's very bite sized. It's actually a video, a quick a video that I can watch. When I've finished watching it, I can go back to the, main, the menu. I can select a different page. Actually, it has also indicated that it's half completed, so it's still being tracked. Um, if I liked it, that video I found it useful, I can pin it there. I can then go through, say, other bits that I'll go to another page. Look at this as an infographic. Very simple infographic. Okay. When I finish with that, I can go back to a menu and so on and so forth. So it's working, it's like a menu, they're working in a kind of Netflix uh, way. Um, but as I go through, the other feature, is, which is again very contemporary, is if I like something, I can pin, pin it. So I just sort of I'm pin, say, that building the railway infographic, I thought that was useful. I pin that, I pinned a few there. And I can now filter, look at that, filtered. You turn on the pinned items. Um, if I go back to the menu, it's only showing the items that I pinned. So I can filter and personalize the content. I can also look at content in terms of, uh, I just want to look at the videos, I just want to look at the web articles, the infographics. So I can group things together. Just going to show me only the video, click the video, go back in. To the menu and only the videos are showing. So it's filtering the content as well which is another nice little touch. So that's quite a, a contemporary style menu I would argue and indeed the structure of the way that the impact that has on structuring the content is also <coughs> very contemporary as well. Um, we just had a question from Michael. Um, can you swipe rather than click to scroll? Users on mobile are used to swiping and have to click instead. It's, yeah. fine. it's fine, but counterintuitive. Um, I'm clicking because I'm running it on a laptop. Yeah. Um, but it's yes, it, you can swipe. Uh, if you're on a mobile or, or a tablet, you'd be swiping. And um, so it's, it's swiping or clicking. It's up to you. It's much more, it, it, I think it's, it's best when it's being swiped, actually. So that's um, uh, a kind of Netflix-style menu that we are using increasingly. Again, I think that the, one of the great advantages with a menu like that is it's kind of uh, to the point. It doesn't need to be dressed up. You know, if you go to a menu like, you, you, menu like that and you, you, you need some content, your content can be a lot more literal when it's kind of uh, framed within a menu of that kind of, um, style because it's what people are used to on the web, for getting what they want when they want it in the way that they they want it. So, so we sort of borrowed um, from the web. There we've got our our topics with our pages, um, which are sort of self-contained. Uh, by the same token, we also recognise again in some cases the learning. There's different kinds of learning, isn't there? There's kind of uh, the, there is a, an approach to learning where you can pick sort of uh, bite-sized things in their own right, but there's still a certain amount of uh, content which needs to be stepped. There's still some content which just has an inherent linearity to it. Um, and you need to understand A and B before you can get to C. So, but I think again that um, this structure works perfectly well. 
it's just that you change the way that it works so that the pages are short and they have at the bottom of the page you scroll down and then at the bottom you go across to the next page so you can work through in a linear way as well if necessary it depends on the content um, but I think it's quite a perfectly flexible approach um, but the, I think one of the key things is the shortness of the pages um, I think what's happened thus far is we've probably got a little bit carried away with the scrolling business so you know since a responsive uh, framework has come along and the, and the ability to scroll through content um, I think that what's tended to happen is we've been producing very long pages the scout pages are much longer than the NH hotel pages um, and the future lies in having still scrolling but also possibly more of a compromise where you scroll scroll down through content but also but it, the pages themselves are much shorter you don't scroll for so long before you hop across you hop across either the old click next to the next page or you go back to the menu and select a different item I think that's the way that it's probably heading the key though will be because it is learning content um, will often be to make sure we said with WISE that there's still a need to be interactive. So the key with these short pages is to make sure that they're as interactive as possible. So I mean, as a designer, you can set yourself the quite challenging uh, um, target to make sure that every single page grabs, no matter how short it is, grabs your attention. Um, but it can, you know, there are lots of different ways of grabbing people's attention. Many of which be familiar to anybody who's uh, uh, done any uh, design in, in, you know, up to now. Um, for example, you know, using questions to trip people up, get people engaged, or to ask people's opinions, and so on and so forth. Um, but um, I'm going to focus on the multimedia dimension because I think, again, we're talking about contemporary learning, and again, I think that we're still way too text sort of based, text and graphics based, in, a, in a most learning content still it tends to be like that and the move towards a more multimedia approach is, is gathering momentum but it's still got some way to go um, in relation to the outside world, i.e. the web and just um, the world uh, of technology and, and consumers, you know, multimedia is ubiquitous outside learning and um, workplace learning um, but really there's no need for that I would argue so we see more web like more interactive um, and much more use of multimedia within um, content that we produce so I'm going to look at a couple of examples of what I mean by that um, I'm talking about video on the one hand and interactive video on the other the immediately mentioned video, of course, everyone gets it all tweaked up about it, and but in terms of expense and and, and all that kind of uh, thing. But I would argue that uh, yeah, video can still be uh, quite expensive, um, but it's also far more possible than ever before to do your own thing, to produce video yourself, all the way down to filming it on on your mobile phone, um, and the results on the phones are remarkable. Um, and to prove it, I'm going to just quickly run um, a little video that some people, or some of my colleagues, made themselves. Um, and not they, okay, it's got some nice, they've got some nice graphics in it, but they, they're not video experts. They, do, this is a do it. Just, <laughs> sorry, mm. is it going to work? I think the best way to make this work. Sorry, you gotta think about the sound in here. I didn't have this problem yesterday, but apparently I do today. I'm thinking. Right. Try better. Can you? We're gonna. Sorry, we're gonna have to jerry rig things a little bit. So you're gonna have to work with the sound that we have for a second. Hold on. Yeah, but it wasn't doing that earlier. So we're going to try this. Hopefully everybody can hear all right, and we're going to press play. 
This is a do it yourself video. Somewhere you got to be? Mate, you forgot something. That's it. Shut it. You just leaving it there? Ah, nice cup of coffee. Hold on, who's this joker? Not a clue. Don't leave it at that. On the audio now. Does everybody find this sound okay? We might just use this method. Yeah, we're just going to use this method. Forget the sound system. <laughs> Did that work? Yes. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Okay, so I mean, that was really, you know, that was, we, we did that ourselves, it was a kind of training exercise basically in, that, in, in to see how easy it was to, well not easy, we'll see what opportunities present themselves in terms of making a video yourselves, I was shot on uh, on the phone actually, I think, uh, um, and uh, obviously the, the, to be fair, we do have graphics people who produce those nice little animations, but you know, um, I think uh, increasingly videos like much lower cost for good quality, um, for example, there was no, there's no need for lighting anymore, you know, that wasn't lit. Um, so, you know, you can use video every opportunity, um, just to have, isn't it better maybe to have uh, film someone talking to, to camera, film them on the phone, talking to camera, explaining something or demonstrating something or uh, enthusing about something and include that in your pages rather than uh, have loads and loads of text that you have to read. So a big sort of supporter of just getting as much video as you can into those uh, short pages. And we, sorry. Sorry, okay. We had a question on what tool we use to create the video. Well, it's shot on the phone, so it was edited. Um, what tool was used? I don't know. To be honest, what um, might have been the graphics team did it, so it might have used After Effects, um, or they might have edited, and or they might have edited it using the app that you can uh, get. The say, if it's an iPhone, so there's an app you can download. So it's a really to simple edit video. Tool that I mean, it's all get, stuff you yeah. can get, and it's all very doable. Does that, so if that's not a good answer, please chat back and say it isn't. Um, okay, um, so that was linear video, um, so, so pushing linear video. Also, there's interactive video, which is um, increasingly um, sort of coming along the tracks. Um, Kineo, we've developed our own um, interactive video framework. Um, so make the video, put put the video clips. They don't have the interactive video in the past has been th thought of as being massive sort of big budget productions that win awards. Um, yeah, okay, that that was the case then. There's also the assumption that interactive video was just branching. It's changed. It's much more um, accessible, much more affordable, and you can basically make sort of ordinary, you know, factual, fact-based video interactive now. It doesn't have to be branching. So. The introduction of um, hotspots into um, video is is a big thing. So you can shoot anything you like, stick hotspots over the top, click on the hotspots, and they open up other videos within the main video, and so on and so forth. And some of the more complex interactive video uh, frameworks, like a like one, for example, you can also do scoring and tracking as well, and um, score compliant, for example, so you can have assessments. Um, and the key thing is, um, whereas in the past interactive video was very dependent, as I said, on drama, nowadays you can just shoot real life. We'll have a look at an example of that in a second. So, that's a, this still, these are stills taken from an interactive video that we've pilot that we've just done. Um, 
you can see how you can click in the video itself and the hotspot is indicated and that then opens up another little video window within. Um, that was a drama and then also within the same program we've got real life interviews with people like that. So the video itself is hot and we've still got branching as well within the interactive videos. Um, I'm just going to show you an example of an interactive video that was done for in an induction course that shows this kind of how the new new interactive video technology kind of works. It's an induction course, so it was that enough I have to select whether I'm male, skin tone, <laughs> so in order to create an avatar for myself. Um, okay, uh, this one was shot at the um, O2, it's for Compass, and it's part of the induction course, and the idea was that you sort of, you, you, you go on a tour of the O2 and meet people who work for Compass in, in performing their different job roles. Hello and welcome. We could not be more pleased about you joining our team. Now, Compass Group is an exciting business. We operate across a multitude of sectors and it's absolutely amazing venues. Now, I could stand here and tell you all about it, but we thought the best thing to do would be to take you on a journey so you can see and experience it for yourself. I know you're going to enjoy things, so good luck. Have a great time. Thank you. So we go on a, a tour of the O2 and we can stop and click on people as we see them. I work in a very large uh, retail site, which is um, anything up to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and then carry on the tour through, through the O2 and meet all our future colleagues and find out about the kind of work that they do, including the mixologist called Max. My name is Maximiliano, and I'm the head mixologist of the American Express in my lounge in the Ultra Arena, part of the restaurant part of Compass. So this is it's not a boring job, it's a great job, and you have to find your job. And yeah, trust me. Okay, so you get the idea, so that's an interactive video. Uh, in, in action. And there we have it. So the whistle stop tour through Wise. I think uh, we have, um, what do you have, 10 minutes left? Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, um, you know, that sort of at uh, least got, got you thinking in terms of uh, how to keep uh, learning design up to date and, uh, and appropriate to um, modern, modern learners. Um, Make sure your content is, or the design of your content is web, web style, interactive, self-directed, and um, even erudite, there is that. And we've got plenty of time for questions, if you've got any, and um, we'll wait online. Otherwise, if you haven't, you're going to disappear. Thank you very much for taking part. So we have a few questions. I'll come a little bit closer to the mic so that everybody can hear me all right. Um, we had a question, can you do interactive video with Adapt? And that's a yes and a no. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, when, yeah, that's a, not quite sure what that means. Um, yes is, is, is and then no, exactly as Kelsey said. And um, the thing we just, um, the program we just watched, that O2 thing, you might have noticed I actually went into Adapt into an ADAPT um, induction course in order to run that. So it's sitting within an ADAPT course. But it wasn't actually created in ADAPT, to be fair. But it's sitting in ADAPT. So that uh, is half the answer, I guess. Um, there isn't actually an ADAPT interactive video plugin yet, um, but I'm sure there will be. Yeah. It's an open source project, and I would expect that to be to come along. So, 
No, there's no, not an adapt plugin at the moment. We had a question on what interactive tool would we recommend, and we would honestly probably recommend the, the one that we made ourselves, yeah. Uh, yeah. being a bit biased, just because I think it's the only one of its kind that's made yeah. specifically for e-learning. There's other products out there, though, such as uh, Swire is one that comes to mind. Um, can you think of any other, James? Yeah, the one we have the license for. Uh, also, um, I can't put... Uh, I'm off the top of my head. Top of my head. Um, keep the questions coming in. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, somebody asked, uh, what was the video created in? And for that one, I assume that was about, um, that was probably the O2 one. So the the o, that O2 interactive video with, um, was, uh, Created by, uh, uh, filmed and uh, made interactive by a company called Outtakes, who have a tech, who have an interactive video technology, and they just shot it on um, 35 mil um, stills camera, but using the kind of video uh, for making uh, the facility you can with 35 mil cameras these days. Yeah, we also had a lot of people asking um, questions around Adapt, like, do we sell Adapt? And you might have saw I put in the comments that it's an open source project. It's something, I think we've got about eight collaborators, businesses That's working good. on that, yeah. and then we also have a whole community where freelancers and anybody can join. Um, if you saw, I sent a link to that, but it's just adaptlearning.org if you're interested in that. Adapt is fantastic. I went to, um, it, it really is quite sort of um, uplifting. It's, uh, you know, it's because it's open source and it's genuinely open source, you know, all the collaborators, um, whether they're from uh, uh, commercial backgrounds or uh, academic ba uh, backgrounds, uh, they're all really up for it. And, um, you know, I do urge you to go and check out their uh, website or go through the link that Kelsey's going to share. Is that right? You're yeah, share. I already shared it. Um, it's adaptlearning.org. Because it is open source. It's, it, you know, it, it's fantastic. Um, we had a question from Liam, which I hadn't addressed yet. Thanks for bringing that up, Liam. Um, he was asking, what kind of time frame for creation in Adapt as against to using something traditionally like a uh, storyline? What do you think the kind of time frame? Like is one quicker than the other, or does it depend on the project? It's a difficult question to answer, I think, from our point of view, because I suppose um, uh, I think our project lead times are the same for both. So I don't think one's quicker, um, but I don't think one's slower. They're different. They're kind of just not the same. Um, you know, obviously, um, storyline is quicker in the sense that you can just sit down and start um, washing stuff out straight away. Actually, no, no, I think they're the same because basically there is an authoring tool as well. Uh, in Adapt, it, it's quite sort of basic and uh, enables you to get started. Once you've got up to speed with using it, um, you could be turning out content as quickly as you can in Storyline. So if you do, when you go to the uh, Adapt site, check out, you know, obviously the authoring tool, um, which will enable you to uh, get up and running fairly quickly. Uh, I think, though, the only, if I'm honest, the only, there is a difference. I think Adapt really does require a little bit of, um, <clears throat> if I wasn't technical, well, I'm not technical, I'd want to sort of go to it with someone who, who is, because there's an element, because it's kind of open source, you need, in, the initial setup can be a bit of a sort of uh, a thing to have to do, like getting, you know, getting it on your computer, so like getting the authoring tool, for example, on your computer and that sort of stuff. It's not quite as easy as the uh, more off the as off the shelf authoring tools like Storyline. Yeah. So be be mindful of that, but don't be put off. I think the key thing is you just got to, you know, re reach out to somebody who can help you who's yeah, more technically orientated. Unless you are yourself. And and when I went to the open day, you know, there were lots of the other day, the community day. Um, there were loads of people who were sort of te very technical. Um, you know, that's it. Sort of. Uh, coders all the way through to people who hadn't got a clue uh, about uh, that, but we're all about the content. Following so off that be question, encouraged. Following off that question, Liam asked, is there more upskilling required than you would with Storyline? 
Um, not for the authoring. If you use the authoring tool, only. We've got, I mean, we've not got really, a lot of no, people using it, like yeah. everybody who doesn't really know any of code mm. to people who know a bunch. It just, I think it depends on how much you want to dig into it yeah. because it is open source. So there is a lot of. It can be quite complex, but if yeah. you, as I say, if you go in for the, if you go at the authoring tool level, no, I'd, I'd argue um, they're both the same. It's just that with that caveat about getting, getting it set up, getting you know because it, you don't just buy. Uh, kind of off the shelf authoring tool. You've actually got to get it onto your setup on your machine. But once you get going, no, it, it, the authoring tool is really, really straightforward. Okay, we've got, sorry, we've got a, quite a few more questions coming in. Um, one from Christopher Can you apply the interactivity demonstrated in the video to an anim animation um, from Astro After Effects, for example? Or is this only available for recorded footage, i.e., is the technology defined by file type? Is there restrictions? Um, no, you can make, um, you can definitely animate, you can definitely make an animation interactive because you can treat an animation as if it's a video. Um, so, you know, it could be an animation, but it could still be saved as a as a video in the video format, and then you can make it interactive. Um, Anne asked a question, and I'm Anne. You can clarify if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming this is about adapt. Um, she asked, "How long do you think before you can use it assessing online learning regarding quiz results?" Um, well, I believe adapt, adapt has that functionality. Uh, now it has that functionality now. Yeah, it uses um, SCORM. And, SCORM the, yeah. and then XAPI has been coming for a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know how soon it is. It's SCORM compliant, though, that. the adapter content. And uh, as is, um, again, with the, the lot of interactive um, video uh, technology, is also SCORM compliant. Yeah, and if you guys, I'm, I'm getting a couple people saying this is the first time they've seen Adapt or seen it demoed. If it's something you're interested in, you, you go to the Adapt and you feel a bit lost. There is a huge community and support network, but we do offer uh, capability training or just helping you guys get off your feet. And um, we have our own maintenance tool, which is a little bit more advanced than the authoring tool, um, but it's kind of where we like test out the stuff and see how it's going. And yeah, you're welcome to just email us at info at kenio.com if that is something you feel like you need a bit of support on. Yeah, we're part of the ADAPT community, a leading sort of member of it, you know, one of the bigger organizations that's part of it. Um, so obviously come to us, ask if you've got any sort of queries we can help yeah. you. You can also you know. see the ADAPT collaborator page and um, yeah, anybody in the chats can happily help you with those tools. I don't, are the people involved in ADAPT um, uh, when I say they're democratic, and uh, so they're also being really kind and enthusiastic and ready to help. And there were stories galore of people coming to into the ADAPT community and needing lots of help, being able to reach out and getting immediate response. And, uh, you know, I sort of really strongly urge you to pursue that route, you know, hook up with, with the ADAPT community and they'll help you. I think that's it for questions. Um, people are saying it's all been really helpful. So I hope you all have a great weekend, unless there's any other questions that come through. If you have additional questions, feel free to drop us an email. I'll send out the recording. You can always respond to that email. It might take me a little while to get back to you all, but we can do that. Or send an email to info at kenio.com. We hope you all have a great weekend. And yeah, all the best. Cheers. Bye-bye then.